Nurgle is the Lord of Decay, who presides over physical corruption and morbidity. He is the father of plagues, and putrefactions are attracted to him like flies to a rotted corpse. For his amusement, he devises foul contagions that he inflicts upon the mortal world, the result of which greatly fascinate him. Nurgle's gaze thus drawn to those mortals bloated with sickness, and he generously favors those who spread disease in his name. To Nurgle, every rattled corpse is a welcoming nursery for wriggling maggots and cloying plague spores. Every stagnant lake and rotting forest is a paradise in which parasitic larvae and bountiful poxes can flourish. These are the gifts that Nurgle lavishes upon the mortal realms, and if there is malice behind his generosity, it is directed only to those ingrates who try to decline his offerings. Hello, all you wonderful listeners. It is I, Nobbler G, and welcome to Nurgle November, a lore study of all things Nurgle in the Age of Sigmar setting. This series will take us through what we know and do not yet know of Nurgle and all of his followers leading up to their awesome release this December. So please, sit back and enjoy this look into the Plague Father's world of corruption in the series brought to you by Grimdark Live, called Nurgle November. Flymasters Stench Lords, Nurgle's Plague Fathers. This is a study of the Great Unclean Ones. The corrupulent Great Unclean Ones, or Plague Lords, are the greater demons of Nurgle. Each is more or less a likeness of Nurgle himself, both physically and in terms of their personality. Indeed, a great unclean one is sometimes referred to as Nurgle, or Father Nurgle by his underlings, although, of course, each also has his own demonic name. A great unclean one is invariably a gigantic figure bloated with decay, disease, and all imaginable kinds of physical corruption. The demon's skin is a necros and leathery surface covered with pockmarks, sores, and other signs of loathsome and infestations. His inner organs rank with decay, spill through the ruptured skin, and hang like rotting drapes about his immense girth. From these organs burst tiny, postulant creatures called nurglings, which chew and suck upon the nauseous juices within. Such foulness echoes the fundamental truth. While there is life, there will be ruin and decay even unto the end of all things. In perverse contrast to his horrific appearance, the great unclean one is neither morbid nor consumed with despair. If anything, the opposite is true. The great unclean one are exuberant in the pursuit of their enthusiasms. Great unclean ones are invariably jovial and mirthful, full of natural will to organize and achieve. Indeed, it is not uncommon for great unclean ones to compete amongst themselves in the manner of spreading Nurgle's plagues and blessings across the world. Gregarious and curiously sentimental, great unclean ones hold their followers dear and even refer to them as their children. They take great patriarchal pride in the achievements of their fellow creatures, proclaiming loudly the splendors of the poxes and sores evinced by those around them, and bellow with hearty laughter in response to the destruction wrought in Nurgle's name. When a great unclean one addresses his blighted throng, he expostulates in a manner immediately reminiscent of a great leader. They are directing his decaying minions with a paternal indulgence at odds with his monstrous appearance. Yet, as this love of Nurgle's creation brings the great unclean one immense joy, he is filled with rage when the petty-minded enemies of chaos try to thwart Nurgle's grand designs. Such wrath initially manifests as a thunderous and adjective-laden oratory 
declaiming those who question Nurgle's will, swiftly descends into brutal, if still somewhat jovial, violence if the heretic is not to be cowed by words alone. When roused to battle, the great unclean one is truly horrifying. He will bound across the battlefield in booming tones, brimming with the jollity of a fulfilling divine commandment, and pauses only to unleash his formidable sorceries against targets ripe for Nurgle's blessing. A great unclean one is slow to advance upon the enemy, but it is all but unstoppable once he has reached his target. Any foe foolish enough to stray upon his path swiftly discovers the immense strength concealed by the greater demon's corpulent form. Whether the plague lord batters his enemy with an iron sword dripping with virulent fluid or a plague-riddled flail matters little, for the result is the same, an indescribable mess of blood and bone already teeming with Nurgle's choicest of festering pestilence. And my friends, I dare to close this little lesson with the words of a horrified witness to a great unclean one, but herein I quote, Until I looked close, I thought his skin was roiling and writhing, when I saw dozens of tiny demons burrowing through his flesh, gnawing on his bones and suckling upon his vile secretions. All this horror was belayed by the beast's cultured voice which welcomed me as a long-lost son, even as I fell retching to my knees." End quote. This has been a tale of the Fly Masters, the Stench Lords, Nurgle's Plague Fathers, the Great Unclean Ones. Hello, and thank you for listening to this installment of Nurgle November. I hope you enjoyed this bit of fun as we head towards the new release for Nurgle uh, for Age of Sigmar 3.0. So be on the lookout for more Nurgle Novembers to come very, very soon. But until then, stay gross, you gamer goons. See you next time. Bye. Remember this, my little pimples. The grandfather loves you. Let me blow you a kiss. (laughs) 